I have a token or data on Ethereum, and I want to send those to Polygon without a centralized bridge to implode on me. Bridge is falling. To do this, I have my Chainlink CCIP sender contract, and all I have to do is call the send message function with whatever information in here I want. For me, I just want to say, what's up to Polygon? Wait for the CCIP Explorer to finish finalizing it. Once it's done, switch chains over to Polygon and see that I successfully sent a cross-chain transaction. With this power, you can build cross-chain DeFi, outsource computation to cheaper chains, aggregate cross-chain yield, cross-chain NFTs, DAO cross-chain, crisscross applesauce, crisscross cross crossfed. In this video, we're going to explain the problems of bridging, show you how to bridge assets using Chainlink CCIP, explain how the code works so that you can build your own cross-chain dApp, and finally talk about the risks of cross-chain applications. In crypto, to move assets to another chain, most of the time people use a centralized bridge. You come to the website, say you want a token from one chain to the other, you scroll down, hit connect and swap, and then wait for your money to show up on the other side. And every time I've done this in the past, I had to get down on my knees and do a little froggy prayer that my money actually shows up on the other side. Because behind the scenes, you're essentially giving your money to some dude and that dude promising you that he'll give you the same amount of money on the other chain. And surprise, surprise, there have been a few times where that dude goes, well, now get wrecked and runs off with your cash. Chainlink CCIP is now our decentralized bridging solution, where instead of one dude moving your funds, you move your funds through a collective of decentralized Chainlink nodes. If one acts maliciously, the other nodes punish them. At the start of the video, we showed what this looked like from a user perspective. Now let's pop under the hood and look at the code. Or if you want, you can head over to docs.chain.link and check out the CCIP tab. Any contract that you want to make cross-chain compatible with Chainlink CCIP, this is essentially everything that you need to know. You're going to create an object of type EVM2 any message. The receiver, which is going to be the target contract or address on the other chain that you want to send data or tokens to. The data, obviously, which is going to be the data that you want to send. Token amounts, Chainlink CCIP comes out of the box compatible with different tokens that it will lock and unlock. Extra arguments, by like setting gas limit and stuff. And then the fee token. In Chainlink CCIP, you actually can change the type of fee token that you want. Finally, you get the fee, you approve the fee token, and then the most important in this whole thing is going to be calling this function CCIP send on this router contract where you choose a destination chain selector and the message that you just created. There's a special contract on every chain where Chainlink CCIP is compatible with called the router, which will route your transaction to. Once you hit send, once you ship off the transaction, the Chainlink CCIP Explorer will actually listen, pick that up, and you can view your transaction going through real time on the Explorer. There's also a Foundry and Hardhat template for working with CCIP if you want to work with one of those frameworks. All of this can be found in the docs. The docs have an image of the architecture of Chainlink CCIP, which basically shows on the left-hand side one chain, on the right-hand side the other chain, and then the Chainlink network in the middle that actually executes the transactions. Now, it's important to point out some of the risks here. Vitalik has tweeted many times in the past about how the future is multi-chain but not cross-chain, and that there are a lot of issues that could potentially arise from doing cross-chain applications. However, these security concerns haven't stopped people from sending billions of dollars of TVL between chains. So we'll leave it up to you to decide. In any case, I hope to see you all build some amazing things with Chainlink CCIP. When you want to make sure it actually is secure and doing and working as intended, be sure to put your project up on CodeHox to get a professional security view or reach out to the Cypher team directly. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.